Uh, we've got a, a phenomenal talk now about uh, the, the software supply chain. So if you saw the, the demo in the keynote this morning, where we, we, we saw one command, the Docker Trust command, that did a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes that used to be really complicated and no longer is, uh, this session is going to kind of dissect that and give you the, the full end to end. So uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome on stage uh, Ashwini and Andy, who work for Docker also. Ashwini is in the, in the security team, and Andy was one of the first people to be Docker certified. So, good luck. Thanks. Hi, I'm Ashwini. I work in the security team, as you just heard. Andy Klemenko, I'm a solutions architect for Docker. So, we're going to talk about secure supply chain. When a company wants to create a product, they go through several steps to achieve it. We usually call these steps the hardware life cycle, or depending on what product you're building. That's where the term supply chain is taken from. So when there, before you even get to the creation step, there is planning about what you're actually going to build. Then there's the actual development of the product. Then there's deployment. You need to uh, get the product out there to your customers and users. And then there's some maintenance and disposal, depending on how you provide support for the product. So this can actually map mostly one-on-one -on -one if you think of the life cycle of software development. You plan the features you're building, you have software developers write the code, then you also ship it out in some way, you package your product, you, um, you release it, and then you ensure that the old versions are supported or deprecated and fix bugs as they come up. So that's the maintenance part of it. In order to support this life cycle from a security perspective, there are a ton of things that you actually need. These exact same concepts can be mapped to an application, as you can see. So for example, you need to know who wrote the code, and they are your developers. You need to know that the QA and testing approved it. You need to know that uh, the application is signed and you can trust it. You need to scan it for any vulnerabilities. And finally, you need to make sure the deployment process works. So today, we're going to focus on the three features that Docker EE provides that help you support your supply chain and make it secure. We're going to talk about signing, scanning, and promotions. But before I jump into that, over to Andy to talk a little bit more about these. So let me tell you how not to do it, okay? As a former government contractor, my team and I built out a very large scale Docker open source registry about two, three years ago. When I left, we had over 1,200 images consuming over a terabyte of storage. The real problem we ran into was that the images quickly, I'm oh, sorry, uploading, updating the images in a quick, and secure way. If anyone's ever heard of sneaker net, right? We ended up moving files by hand. This obviously is not ideal. While onboarding new teams, trying to get them to use our service, when we explained to them how we did it, we you know, got blank looks and strange looks. The real problem really for us was lack of versioning, control, verification on each end. There's a better way, more repeatable. There's also a better way to verify with the images on each side. So seeing as how we're in Docker country, uh, Scott Johnson, our CEO, had a great phrase. He said, Docker's like a box of Legos, right? I know my kids want authentic Legos. I'm sure your organizations want authentic images as well. And for those that are not super familiar with Docker images, yet think of it as like a piece of Lego that you just contains the binaries and libraries, what you need for your application. Plus, I'm sure you don't want to end up with a container fire, right? Think of a container fire as any unwanted, malicious, malformed code in an image, even outdated. So where do we start with our supply chain? So let's, let's talk about a few starting points, okay? The two options really that you have is using store or git, right? By git, we mean pretty much any versioning system out there. SVN, on-prem, cloud, it doesn't matter. Store is a great place to start with because you get certified images, official images, and community images. Git 
on the other hand, is, gonna where, is where you're going to store your Docker files and all your assets for when you build. Let's take a closer look at store, okay? Store.docker.com should be the first place to go to find images. Store contains certified images and plugins certified by Docker and the vendor, which means that the images and plugins are verified to work. If a certified image fails to meet your needs, start looking at official images. And just for a bit of reference, official images are official from Docker based upon help with the community. Okay? Store also does vulnerability scans against certified and official images. So there's a trust but verify aspect there. Right? Let's look at how to choose the right image for your organization. Sort of a simple tree. Start with certified images. These are certified again by our vendors, guaranteed to work. Then start looking at official images, which comes from open source. If neither, neither of these two fits your needs, then move on to the community images. But there's a big caveat here. Only use the community images if it's an automated build, if you can verify and review the Docker file that built it, and it's got to make sense. There's no point in bringing in some open JDK from Bob the developer that you've never met. It just doesn't make sense. Okay? If those community images don't match what you need, now you've got to start thinking about building it yourself. Okay? Let's go take a look at Git. So Git's an awesome tool for creating a source of truth by keeping all your files, your build declaratives, all the files you need in one location, it's a hell of a lot easier to version control and maintain. Again, Git can be replaced with any version control system out there. On-prem, cloud, SVN, it doesn't matter. It's the concept I want you guys to take home. Let's look at what, be sh let's look at what be should, that, bleh. let's look at what should be stored in your repository. Okay, looking at a sample repository, all the f with all the files you need, some of the good ones you want are obviously the build declarative, a Docker file, your artifacts, whether it's Python, Java, Flask, whatever, your stack YAML, how to deploy the application or the stack, right? Maintaining all the files in one location will really help with that application lifecycle as well. Not to mention creating a clean audit trail. Who pushed the changes? When were the changes pushed? And what was the build number? helps to tie back the build number to commit number for creating that audit trail. Speaking of automated builds, repeatable builds are essential. Automation's your friend. I don't know about you guys, but I like vacations. Being able to automate it means you can go take a vacation, and the developers don't have to worry necessarily about the CI system and what comes out on the other end. Plus, a phrase I like saying is, no human should ever build images meant for production. You want the audit trail. You want the accountability, right? Let's go back to Ashwini. She'll talk more about signing. All right. So Docker EE lets you sign images with Docker Content Trust. Signed images provide assurances that the shipped artifacts were not altered in any way or tampered with in storage or transit. Docker Content Trust enables you to pull only signed images from a trusted repository registry. You can cryptographically sign an image to establish trust. I have some exciting new features in that area to show you. If you were at the keynote this morning, you might have seen a small demo. But before that, uh, a little bit more on the feature that Docker Content Trust itself provides. Once you enable it, you can enforce known good content, even if the registry that you're using has been uh, compromised. Here, you can see that we're trying to build from an unsigned image, unsigned image, and even if the image exists, Docker, with content trust enabled, will refuse to build from it, which can protect us in a lot of ways. And even when there is a fake signature, Docker will, Docker will refuse to build from that image unless the Dockers have the exact key that your Docker client has been for the repository owner. You're also protected from building from old unmaintained repositories or old unmaintained images 
the update framework that uh, Docker Content Trust implements provides freshness guarantees for collections of signed data, and this is huge. In fact, not just that, you can use signed images as the trusted, known good base for other builds. In this way, you can build up a chain of trusted images until you get to a deployable artifact. This is really the model that most official images follow. Signed official images are built upon other signed official base images until you get to something you can deploy and ship to your users. So with that said, I want to share an exclusive preview of our upcoming Docker Trust feature that makes signing and managing trust on your images really easy. So let me demonstrate that. Demo time. That's odd. All right, so let's start by setting up signing policy for my app. Um, so I am going to enable Docker Content Trust, and since I'm in the security team, I'm going to select that security needs to sign off on images before we can ship anything. Let's hit save, um, and off we go. So I have this, right, so I have this image bold, and I'm going to try and see what tags are signed. So here we go, let me, it's going to show me that V1 is a signed tag that we have here, but I really want to deploy V2. And the tag exists, as you can see, I've pulled it. I just haven't signed it yet. I am going to go create a new service, give it a name, and select V2. Is it visible? Do you need me to zoom in? No? All right. Here we go. All right. So we got an error saying that the image did not meet the signing policy. Let's go fix that. All we need to do is docker trust sign the image name and the tag. It's going to ask me for my passphrase. And here we go. Let's just make sure that it actually is signed. Yep, looks fine. And let's try this again. There we go. So that's basically how easy it is to set up a signing policy and set up signing itself. And with that said, I am going to go back to the presentation. All right. So now that you have your images signed, Docker provides you with something called scanning. Docker E's scanning feature automatically looks through your pushed images and scans for known vulnerabilities. This is going to make your security engineers very, very happy. And not just that. In fact, if you have a chain of trusted images and a vulnerability is found in one of the images, you can set up automation to rebuild all child images descending from that parent when a patch is pushed, thus simplifying your remediation process. And that leads us to the final one, promotion. Docker EE has the ability to promo promote images based on scan results. Let's, let's talk about that a bit. So with image promotion, you can set up some sort of threshold or policy and promote your blessed images from one repository to another in the same registry. Each registry, each repository in a registry can have its own access control, and images can be automatically retagged to a new tag. This can be done manually or automatically, however you'd like to set it up. I'll, and with that, I'll let Andy show you how. Let's go and switch laptops. All right. We're going to switch over to my laptop. Okay. Everybody likes demos, right? So in this demo, 
our goal is really go from a git commit to a sign, fully signed promoted image that's gone through our policies of promotion, that's gone through our scanning, right? It gives us that, that warm and fuzzies of being able to go on a vacation. Everybody likes vacations, right? So, I've got a bunch of files here. This is my directory that I use. Let's go ahead and update my Python app. Got to update it for this conference, right? And let's go ahead and run it. So right here I'm just doing a simple git push. Everybody's done these thousands of times, right? But let's see what's actually going on. So what this is going to do, I'm using GitLab. Again, you can use any CI system out there, right? You can use any version control system out there. What we're doing is that git push created a new build. We can go take a look to prove that it's real. And this went and pushed a job up to, uh, push, built the image and pushed it up to DTR. And DTR, well pay attention to the build number 333. And DTR, we push to a private repo where we want to ensure that it goes through our policy. By putting it into a private repo, it prevents anybody downstream of us, our customers, to be able to take advantage of it yet. So let's go and do a refresh. And you'll see build number 333. This private repository has been set up with a policy, promotion policy. Let's take a look at it. This, potion, this promotion policy trigger basically will only promote if the image has less than or equal to any vulnerabilities. Okay. Obviously, you can set up your threshold based upon your risk. If this was a development environment and you're creating a development pipeline, turn it up a little bit and maybe say no critical, only major and minor. Okay. We can actually add some triggers and let's go ahead and take a look at a new promotion, promotion policy. So we can actually go and look at individual packages. Let's say we didn't want TCP dump in a package or we didn't want Wireshark or we didn't want Nmap. We have the ability to essentially create a blacklist that says don't promote this image if it contains a bad binary. Right? Again, this allows you to, to create better policies around security. When you, do, when you create the promotion, you have the uh, possibility of changing the repository itself. Okay? So let's go back to the example of the existing policy. So again, I was pushing into an admin flask build private repo. When the promotion policy gets triggered, I'm going to push to an admin flask public repo. Right, it's past our policies and now it's available, but we're missing a step. And that step is signing. We have the ability to use a webhook. So when the image is promoted, the webhook fires and I have a second job in my CI system that goes and pulls the image and signs it. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about the Docker Trust command because it simplifies setting up some of the, uh, the notary commands. But here, this job pulls it, signs it, and pushes it back up to DTR. So the end result Let's go ahead and refresh. Wow. Worked a lot of times. But as you can see, it's run before. And let's actually kick it off again. Um, I'm going to rerun the job. While that's running, that should take a sec. While that's running, I'm going to set up a demo designed to fail. So let's go look at our Docker file for that repo. And I'm going to change it to an old version, right? We obviously don't want old versions of code getting, you know, with, with known vulnerabilities getting promoted. Let's go ahead. So it job succeeded. There we go. Right? 
So let's go look at our failed job. Let's kick that off. We'll go back here to our CI system. Notice the job's running. Give it a quick second. Pushes images up. We come back to DTR. Scanning engine is kicking off. Of course, this is what we want. I also want to make a note on webhooks. Is you can actually go and create uh, webhooks oops, based upon a lot of different triggers. Right? So if you want to add additional functionality through the use of webhooks, say to Git or e uh, Slack or email or any type of communication system, right? We can do tag on push, we can do tag deleted, we can do manifest push, scan completed. If you want to do, a, uh, say you've got a security team that wants to do tight reviews of, of the scanning results, uh, in addition to your policy thresholds you've set, or if it failed, right? That's always a good to know. So let's go back and see where our scan result is. <laughs> a critical 15 major. So obviously we know the build with uh, the image with tag three, Five, 335 is not a good one. So let's go look at our public repo. Let's do a refresh. Right? And now we can see the tag 335 did not complete, did not make it through your chain. Right? I think that's kind of cool. So let's go back to the slide deck. So let me recap what happened, right? In case it was slow, but let's make sure everyone understands, right? So I used Git, I did a push to my CI system, my uh, file versioning control and CI system. Once the bill was complete, it did a push to a private repo where it was scanned and promoted based on our security policies. It then sent a webhook to the CI system again that said, everything's good, now go ahead and sign it and push it back to a public repo. So similar to the demo Ashwini showed with the policy enforcement within UCP, within Docker EE, that'll prevent you from running unsigned images. If someone were able to get the image from the private repo that's not signed by our CI system, they would be unsuccessful in trying to even execute that Again, it's, we really want to create strong policy enforcement. And don't take our word for it. Try it out for yourself. If you're interested, there is a trial that you can check out. And there's, well, this is DockerCon, so there are a lot of people here to answer any questions you might have. So let me give you a call to action. Success.docker.com, we've got a lot of reference architectures, a lot of knowledge base articles there. There will be a reference architecture coming out soon about this exact topic, okay? And we'll go into a lot greater detail on how to set some of this stuff up if you're interested. Also, store.docker.com, you can now start planning your secure supply chain and looking at images that you might want to take advantage of. You can take questions if there are any. Can we have the room? Oh, we're on. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that. That was fantastic. That, uh, uh, so I expected the demo to take way longer because it does so much stuff. <laughs> but it was really cool to see that. So uh, yeah, well, well, we've got plenty of time for questions. I've got about 10 questions myself, but I won't, I won't hog the mic. <laughs> so first question. Thank you. Uh, could you please return to the workflow slide? Yep. Uh, I had a question there. I do not quite understand uh, the uh, step where CI pulls and signs the image. Why do you pull it again? Because you just pushed it. And basically, uh, after step number three, your CI knows that it's a cool image, so it, it, it can promote so, it. So why would you pull it again? Because most CI systems have independent builds and independent workspaces that really need to be independent, obviously. If you're building different Java, Python, whatever, you want them to have different build environments. The reason why we do it that way is because all the builds are also within Docker. So essentially it's doing Docker and Docker, right? 
So the idea is pull it again, right? Verify it and then sign it. And don't forget, all pushes and pulls are TLS, right? So you've got a secure channel between the CI system and DTR, Docker Trusted Registry. And, and the, the signing step that happened, the, so that the signature that's being used to do the signing lives inside your CI system? Yes. And, and, it, and UCP knows which user that maps to? Absolutely. Okay, so you could, you could have a runtime policy in UCP that says this image has to have been built by CI and approved by X, Y, and Z. Yeah, so and you can even add multiple CIs. You can do a, a signing at one stage and then be like, okay, I need to, my QA builds to sign this again, and that needs to be approved too. Okay. So you can set signing policies to have multiple um, signers as a requirement before, you, uh, before you're allowed to deploy it. Cool. Okay, next. Actually, what, you're, what you were talking about is also known as threshold signing. Off the top of my head, let me pull up a group. Uh, Orca Bank. So we can actually go under Content Trust and add multiple groups. That's what we were talking about. Which probably looks like I got to add a group underneath. Oh, security, payments, there you go, we can add payments. There you go, mobile. Right. So now we require two signatures, right? Which is uh, that threshold signing, making sure that both the security team signs off and say the, the mobile release team or release engineering. Cool, thank you. Got a question in the back here? Um, earlier today we heard about DTR next version supporting mirroring between DTRs, but that doesn't um, continue the signing. Yep. In that presentation, you guys were stitched up to tell us how we can actually re-sign automatically when it gets to the target DTR. It's actually real easy. So the same process we used for kicking off the CI pull, you could essentially create a job that would, once it gets promoted to the other DTR, pull it and re-sign it there. There's another way you can also start thinking about doing this is, is kind of like a spoken hub where your build system could potentially push to both DTRs, right? Based again on signing rules, scanning policy, things like that. Um, the nice thing, you know, back to Scott Johnson, Johnston's uh, quote about being a box of Legos, the nice thing is you've got all these Lego pieces between CI, between version control, and multiple, use, multiple Docker E installations that you can kind of build out what makes sense. Right? I, actually, I have a customer that does the spoken hub model. I have another customer that does uh, cache chaining. Right? So you've got a lot of options there. I'm going to have a question again. So the, um, so the, the new Docker trust commands, they used to be able to do this stuff before, but you used to have to run like a whole bunch of notary commands. And I understand it's complicated, and that's why you've got to do all that stuff. But now it's not complicated. Is it still notary? Under the hood, yes. But I like that is something you don't even need to know. You don't need to know what notary is. You don't need to set it up. Uh, Docker Trust will do it for you. And actually, notary was just submitted to CNCF. Nice. So the notary project is, you know, committed to CNCF, and there's a lot of great stuff we can expect to see out of that in the future. Cool, thank you. Okay, any other questions? So Nathan, you must have a question, because th this is your team. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? No? Cool. Okay, well, thanks very much. I got a, que I got a question for them. <laughs> right? Unorthodox. I can't take a mic to all okay. of them. It's okay. Show of hands, who has CI systems, who have supply chains at work? How many of you hate them? How many of you feel they're secure? How many of you are use GPG or some sort of signing method? Let, let, let the record That's show three. there was a, there was, That's there was There's not very many there. There's not very, <laughs> There's but not the very three many. were impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, well, thank you. So, on that, so these, the, these folks were around for the rest of DockerCon, so yep. any questions you want to ask, just find them and ask them. Thanks very much for that, and, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll see you around. Have a great DockerCon. Cool. Thank you.